and a warm welcome to 2025 and ZapMap's first episode of The Charge, our regular look at all things EV charging, data and insights. Well, Jade, 2024, big year, loads of milestones, new Labour government, good legislation. And yesterday we heard about the, the great 2024, end of 2024 for BEVs, 30% market share and 19.6 across the whole year, just under 20%. Yeah, pretty amazing. No wonder it felt like such a whirlwind of a year. Yeah, it did. Um, I'm not quite sure how we're going to kind of get all that into a quick 10 minute summary video. So firstly, let's have a look at the results from the EV survey. Yeah, so the survey is in its fifth year, over 3,700 respondents this year. And overwhelmingly, EV drivers are still really positive about their experience with their BEV. So 87% average satisfaction and actually less than 3% of EV drivers from the survey say they would like to go back to an ICE vehicle. Pretty good, pretty good. And I think that reflects almost exactly the same figures as the EVA England got yeah. and the fully charged got in their surveys. One thing, one bit of data that we're always looking at is that what percentage of EV drivers are able to, to charge at home. And actually, when we looked at this year and over the past five years, it hasn't moved mm -hmm. that much. And broadly, it's still around that 80 percent of drivers are able to charge, charge at home. Yeah. And I think one of the interesting things around that is that although they are doing those people have got a charge point at home. They are doing 85% of their charging at home, but the public network is still really crucial to them. So for some people, it is that occasional journey that's much longer than, than usual where they're using the public network. But over half of the respondents did say that they were using the public network at least once a month. Um, so really, really important that the public network is growing and is really robust for those EV drivers of today. Yeah, no, really important. And so whilst the overall satisfaction for the vehicles is high, when you actually look at the satisfaction for charging, it is a little bit less. Yeah, yeah. We saw 64% average satisfaction for charging on the public network. But when you look at people thinking, has it improved or not? 61% felt, yes, it's improved. And the number one reason was... There are more chargers. Yeah, yeah. How many more? <laughs> yeah, so in terms of actually how many more chargers there are, there are over 20,000 more chargers wow. were added to ZapMap in the course of the last year. Is that the most ever? That is the most ever in a single year. Um, and we're now at 73,500 chargers on ZapMap. So really big jump over the course of 2024. So if you want to have a look at all those details of charging growth, we've got a press release and links are in the show notes. And then of course, as we've been talking about over the year, the, the number of those really important ultra rapid 150 kilowatt chargers essential for longer journeys, that, that has been the area that's been yeah. growing the most. 7,000 now, end of last year, it's grown by 84%. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is about the ultra rapid chargers, it's not just, you know, obviously crucially important for those drivers now, they want to be able to find the chargers, but equally it's really important to have visibility of those banks of chargers, six, eight, 10, 12 chargers. Yeah, that just really gives those EV drivers of tomorrow the confidence about making the switch when they can see those chargers out there. Which charge point operators have really been driving that growth? Yeah, so the biggest growth that we saw last year um, in that area was with Osprey. And then that's really closely followed by Instavolt, MFG and GridServe as well. Um, as well as alongside that, seeing more of the Tesla um, supercharger locations open into the public. Yeah, I mean, that's great, isn't it? Those, those five networks all at the top of our, of our most reliable networks yeah. table as well. So that's good to see. Yeah, and although the kind of top five of the um, rapid and ultra rapid providers cover about 50% of those devices, there are other smaller networks that are also um, really focused on that kind of deployment. Um, so we've got in that space, BEV, Fastned, Ionity, Apple Green Electric. Again, all of them did really, really well in our survey. Yeah, and expanding quickly. Yeah. As you saw on the graphic, the key growth has been in those ultra rapid 150 kilowatt chargers used for the longer journey, as we've been talking about throughout the year. Really impressive. And actually, when you're looking at where those chargers are, often they are in the charging hubs. Yeah, and they've grown really significantly over the course last year, more than doubled. Yeah, more, more than doubled and lots of impressive hubs. I mean, we're, we're showing here the amazing one at GridServe in Stevenage and your favourite. Yeah, another one, but a very, very different area is up in Southport with eight ultra rapid devices. 
Amazing. Right next to the beach. Ne oh, so you'll be going there on holiday, <laughs> charging up while you're on the beach. Yeah, and having an ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then next year, lots to look forward on the hubs, I think. I mean, we've already seen a whole lot of work going, going, going on, waiting for these hubs to open. I'm looking forward to the uh, Instavolt charge. So Instavolt, this yeah, one, this one. one looks really, really amazing. Um, and then again, across the other side of the country, BV are looking at putting theirs up at the Manchester Oasis, no pun. Probably not intended, oh. not sure. <laughs> and is that one of their big green hubs? Yeah, that's one big of their big green, green hubs. hubs. Motorway services and charging hubs, pretty popular locations. And you know, what's next? So next up in terms of most popular locations is the supermarkets, although this has declined in the last few years. Kind of as expected because they've moved from giving free charging to it actually costing money. Yeah. So yeah. But 2024, a bit of a renaissance. Smart charge and Sainsbury's their, their sort of, work. Yeah, really leading the way there, I think, throughout 2024. Um, as you can see, there's so many other tie-ins, and I think those are ones we're going to see more of that coming in 2025, see what's happening there. Yeah, it feels like a deep, deep dive coming. Yeah. <laughs> Often people talk about there being a poor distribution of chargers regionally, but actually, when you take a look at the data for the en-route high-powered chargers, they're pretty well distributed. And now nine out of 12 geographical regions across the UK have at least a thousand devices. Yeah, it's really, really good. And that has changed significantly over the course yeah. of the last year. Um, where the comment about the regional disparity is completely valid still is in the on-street side of things. Yeah. I mean, you see that Still, of the 25,000 on-street chargers, 72% of them also are still in Greater London. And, yeah, and there's a smattering elsewhere, but it is very concentrated. Yeah. But there's still been a lot of growth. Yeah, still been a lot of growth. Um, there's a, a core group of on-street providers who are doing really fantastic work and managing to roll out ahead of the Levi funding actually being spent. So I think once we get that money actually transforming into installations, then we'll see really big growth over the second half of this year. Yeah, prob probably thousands. Yeah. Thousands. I think another thing in 2024 has been the emergence of that through pavement solution, people like Curbo Charge. And it's been interesting hearing local authorities talk about that. A lot of people are trialling that now. And then I think just before Christmas, um, the government published its guidance on cross, cross pavement solutions. So it'll be, yeah, see what, see what happens with that. So we've talked about the availability of charges been a great increase over the last year. The other side of that is how often they are used, the utilisation, something we track mm -hmm. very carefully at ZapMap. In December, we, there was 2.5 million sessions tracked through the ZapMap app, which is, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. That is, a lot of sessions. Yeah, that is EV drivers going out on the public network and getting a successful charge. Two and a half million of them. Yeah, I mean, and that's been tracking up really well. And that obviously links to the reliability, I think, that uh, PCBR regulations came out coming into force at the end of last year. Something else we're going to be looking at and, and, and reporting on this year coming. Yeah. The third area that's really important is the cost to charge. Yeah, I mean, that's gone up, hasn't it, in, in the last three years of the survey. It used to not be an issue, now right up there. Yeah, yeah, EV drivers definitely concerned about that. What we've actually seen on the price index is it's remained pretty stable over the last year. Oh, you um, wouldn't think it, though, would you? Yeah, no, it definitely, definitely has. <laughs> um, and if you go and have a look at the website, you can see how that splits out among the different personas we've got. John and Rosa, our classic persona of someone who is charging at home 85% of the time, seven pence a mile yeah not bad so yeah i mean have a look in the show notes for the other personas i mean i think it's a, such a critical issue we, we're going to be again looking at that in more detail in 2025 and we've invited vicky reed from charge uk to to give us a bit of an update from the cpo perspective on yeah. that well that was a whistle stop tour looking across the 2024 of what's been going on in charging i mean now new year looking forward to what's what's to come zev mandate consultation Lots more charges. Lots more charges being rolled out. Um, so it's not going to be a quiet year, 2025, then, though. I don't think it's been a quiet year for the last 10 years. So there's no <laughs> reason why this one would be. <laughs> yeah. So thanks very much for watching. If you need any data and insights from ZapMap, please do get in touch. Insights at zapmap.com. Mm -hmm.